The F. W. Woolworth Company began in 1879 by businessman Frank Winfield Woolworth. Woolworth's five and dime stores were increasingly successful in the United States. Frank Woolworth visited Germany during 1890, where he purchased goods and made agreements with companies and stores to sell to him directly for him to place in his stores. By selling direct to Woolworth, European made products made up around 25% of the items sold in Woolworth five and dime stores by 1914, just before World War I. Frank and his wife visited Paris, France, when World War I began and broke out. He and Jenny, while his company officials based in New York told him not to go, visited his European stores during the summer of 1914. While armed men arrived throughout Paris while Woolworth was driven in his limousine down the city streets, the Germans were quickly encroaching France. Woolworth wrote back to his New York offices for help indicating the Germans were a real threat to Paris and Frank and Jenny had no way to get back home. They were driven safely through enemy lines to board a train on a transatlantic liner to the United Kingdom. New York sent papers full of Woolworths to prove they were American citizens, and they arrived in Switzerland. Quickly needing to learn French and German, he learned to tell those that stopped him that he had factories in Germany or France, and was a wealthy man who helped the economy. They arrived safely back in New York on Saturday, October 3rd. After the United States entered the war in 1917, Woolworth helped the United States by teaching factories throughout the country and educate them in mass production like the warehouses he had seen while visiting Europe. Also during this time of mass production, his factories learned how to make goods, as he had gotten from Britain, Russia, and Germany, which of some he could no longer get. He made more profits by producing them himself in the United States. President Woodrow Wilson called for his help, and Wilson teamed with Woolworth and competitor S.S. Kresge to create a war bond scheme with the slogan, A Stamp a Day for the Man Who's Away. Frank Woolworth declared that every store in the United States, after November 11, 1918, would proudly hang the American flag until every soldier had come back home. Frank W. Woolworth died on April 8, 1919. Byron Miller, who had been the British subsidiary director of Woolworths, became the vice president responsible for international operations. In 1924, strengthening ties between them and Germany, he had a warehouse built in Sonneberg, where he had his own train station built as well, which began the Woolworth subsidiary, Woolworth GmbH. Afterward, stores were built. The first Woolworth Company GmbH store in Germany opened on November 2, 1926, in the coastal city of Bremen. After success, more stores followed. During this time, American products were very popular in Germany. By the end of the following year of 1927, there were seven German stores. Just a handful of years later, in 1932, political unrest made Woolworth's outlook on Germany shaky. As the years after World War I went by, the Nazis increased their power in Germany and attempted to wipe out Jewish communities and influence, anti-Semitic actions were taken throughout Germany. One of these acts were to crush Jewish-owned businesses. Beginning on April 1, 1933, at 10 a.m., Nazi stormtroopers were sent out to protest Jewish-owned establishments, including doctors, lawyers, and businesses. Adolf Hitler had become German Chancellor the previous January, and on March 23rd had become dictator. This boycott was arranged by Nazi propaganda minister Josef Goebbels. Nazi soldiers began protesting Woolworth stores in Germany. Apparently, they had Woolworth mixed up with Woolworth stores, which were Jewish owned, while the Woolworths were Methodist. As stormtroopers stood in front of stores, they were to intimidate potential customers and hurt the business. Some of the signs translated in English said, Germans defend yourselves against Jewish atrocity propaganda. Buy only at German shops. Woolworths officials in New York as well as Berlin refuted the fact that Woolworths was a Jewish company. During this time, Chairman of Woolworths, Charles Sumner Woolworth, was also a Methodist. As the National Socialist Party increased its power in Germany, new laws were put in place that overseas firms such as Woolworth could not take profits they made in Germany out of the country. During Berlin Olympics in 1936, Woolworths in Berlin featured an Adolf Hitler tea set. 
As World War II and bombing began in Germany, the Nazis used Woolworth's warehouse to hold arsenal in the hope that the United States would not bomb the building, but it was raised in 1945. Supposedly, Woolworths fired their Jewish employees in Germany in order to survive. During the war, there were 82 branches in Germany, and 66 of them were destroyed, while in Britain, 6% of Woolworth locations were destroyed. In 1997, Woolworth GmbH was sold to private firms and remains in operation today.